They tell them they've got evidence for evolution. Here's the evidence they give them. Evidence from fossils. Oh, come on. Anybody with half a brain knows no fossil counts as evidence for evolution. None. You bring some bones into the courtroom. Your Honor, see these bones right here? These are the ancestors of everybody today. <laughs> any freshman law student could say, uh, Your Honor, he doesn't know those bones had any kids that lived. And why would you think a bone you found in the dirt can do something animals today cannot do? You know, produce something other than their kind? Fossils simply don't count, folks. No fossils count as evidence for evolution. They say, we've got evidence from structure, molecular biology, development. They say, the process of evolution is by natural selection. If real evidence exists for that theory, then please show me. I'm not against scientific evidence. I am against lying to the kids. And everything they use to teach that theory to your kids has been proven to be a lie. Evolution is based on two faulty assumptions. Number one, they say mutations make something new. That's never been observed. Number two, they say natural selection makes it survive and take over the population. Now think about this carefully. If an animal evolves a little better than the rest, what must happen to the rest of them in order for this process to work? They all have to die or else the good genes get blended back into the population. Evolution is a religion of death, not life. But the definition of the word evolution is really confused for the students on purpose, I believe. I think it takes a giant leap of faith and logic just to go from micro to macro. Sure takes a big leap to go to the other four stages. Macro evolution is a fantasy based on imagination. They believe it must have happened, but there is no evidence for it at all. Teachers, though, will give the students one definition of the word to get them to believe the theory, and then they slowly weed in the rest of it when they're not looking. They're going to say, evolution is descent with modification. That's deceitful. That's not really what they mean by evolution. This textbook says, evolution is change over time. First definition. Watch how they change the definition now. In other words, living things have changed over time. <laughs> Wait a minute. What happened to the first four stages? You're going to skip all the way down to living things and just assume the first four happened? Mm -hmm. Then they say, evolution is a change in species over time. Now they jumped right down to what I believe in. I believe species can change over time. I think the changes are limited. Still the same kind. But you might, somebody might call it a different species. It's still the same kind of animal. That's not really what they mean by evolution, folks. What they really mean is the whole theory comes as a package deal. Evolution is not science. Evolution's a religion. Hitler said, let me control the textbooks and I'll control the state. The geologic column is actually the Bible for the evolutionist. It can only be found one place on planet Earth. The only place you will ever find the geologic column is in the textbooks. There is no geologic column. This guy admits it. He said, if there were a column of sediments, unfortunately, no such column exists. I had one a, a, a professor I debated one time said, oh, Hoven, you're wrong. Now, there are 26 places on planet Earth where the geologic column exists. I said, no, I'm sorry, you're wrong. There are 26 places on planet Earth where the fossils are found in the order you would like them to be. But that doesn't prove the geologic column exists in any of those places. There is no geologic column. If there was in one place, it would be 100 miles thick. And the obvious question would be, where's all this dirt coming from? Hmm? One of the biggest lies kids face in the textbooks is about the geologic column. It's a joke. It's a hoax. It doesn't exist. But that really caused problems for the world in 1830 when it was taught. We'll get into that in a minute. Look, there's no question the Earth has layers. But if those layers are different ages, why are there no erosion marks between the layers? They all just fit tight to each other like pancakes. I mean, don't you think if that one layer sat there waiting for the next one to come on top, it'd rain once in a while in 10 million years? Mm hmm. Just go home and get a jar of dirt and put some water in it and shake it up, folks. It'll settle out of the layers for you in a few seconds. It's called hydrologic sorting.